Before I came to Christ, I was a drug dealer. I used drugs for a lot of years. I was a lesbian. I had been, as long as I can remember. I've been arrested over 18 times for aggravated assault, assault and battery, um, narcotics, conspiracy, just any little stupid thing. You know, and I never got it. You know, God <laughs> was trying to sit me down. I just wouldn't listen. My anger issues is what ran me my whole life. Um, being so angry from being physically abused and sexually abused and just any kind of abuse you can think of. We have a ministry here that is twofold. One is the local church and the other is the training center. The training center is an opportunity for people out in the suburbs to come into an inner city and understand how to reach people for Christ and how to be able to learn about God and then take it back home. One of the biggest things we will do here is we will help you uh, develop skills to talk to people and to relate to people who don't know Jesus. Too often, we miss many opportunities to share Christ with people because we don't even open our mouth and we're afraid to start a conversation. You will not believe the numbers of people who have turned their lives over to Christ. You're finding people who not only did drugs, but were drug dealers, are now involved in our church. There are people who not only were into voodoo and a santeria and all that, they're now involved in, in our ministry, in our church. And when you see what God does, and when you see answers to prayer, and when you see people that start talking to other people about their faith, and then you see those people respond to the gospel and, and their whole lives change, you cannot believe it. Yeah, I can go outside my apartment and I see trash everywhere and I see graffiti, and I see drug deals going, I see drug deals going virtually every single day. I don't care about that at all because those drug dealers are coming to Jesus. And you know what I'm discovering in suburban areas? We don't see the overlooked. We don't see the people who are, we feel awkward about. God made those people. God loves those people. Who's going after those people? We're not mean to them. We just never talk to them. We just ignore them. They swear. They're dirty. They have a mental problem. They're physically handicapped. Let's just go our own way. And yet they're people that need Jesus. And you know what I've discovered? When I'm in an area like inner city Philadelphia, these people are wonderful. They are great people. You know what? They're not just a project, they become friends. And that can happen right where you are too. Urban Hope is the most wonderful thing that has happened to this neighborhood. Uh, if it wasn't for Urban Hope, I wouldn't have came to Christ. I'm a mother of three. Not only is my life pleasing to God now, my life is pleasing to my children now. My daughter <laughs> was going to Kingdom Kids and she invited me to church. And we do this thing since she was really little, we pinky swear. So um, at the time, I was still doing drugs and stuff like that and she asked me, uh, Mom, can you go to church with me Sunday? I don't wanna just go to Kingdom Kids when they come get me, I wanna go to church. So I said, okay, she said, you pinky swear? <laughs> so I pinky sweared, and I looked at my friend, I said, I guess I'm going to church tomorrow. <laughs> so um, through Kingdom Kids and the programs that we have here, so many people have come to Christ. And that's just a beautiful thing. It's, <laughs> they work, Urban Hope works. <laughs> Half of the people that I raised up with are no longer here. That's probably where I was leading my life to. People that lived in this neighborhood knows of the shooting, 
just the murders that go on. And I'm just grateful and thankful that the Lord saved me. If it wasn't for Urban Hope, I don't even know where I would be. When I think about Urban Hope, I think about a cup. And I think about God's love filling this cup. And, uh, and there's so much love in this place that the cup is constantly overflowing into this community. When I pray for Urban Hope as a church, I pray that um, the cup will continue to overflow into this community. And that's the reason why uh, people uh, in this community are being saved and people you know, are being able to see and the light is shining in this place. Urban Hope is what it means to follow Jesus. That's what I take Urban Hope. It's what it means to follow Jesus. We stand strong in what the Bible says. It's changed my life, not just mine, but the lives of my children and my wife. She was the only person that can ever get me angry. And today she tries very hard not to. She loves me just as much as I love her because Jesus is loving on both of us. If you want your students or you want your adults or you want people in your church to be challenged to share their faith with people and use words uh, as well as acts of service, then come and experience a weekend at Urban Hope. I promise you it'll make a difference in your group. To give your life for the cause of other people and then when you see what God does in turning their lives around and they become different people and they'll say, guess what, I gave up my drugs. Guess what, I gave up my cigarettes. Guess what, I'm not living an immoral lifestyle. I moved out from the one I was living with. Guess what, I'm getting straight A's in school. There's nothing like that. It's very fulfilling. Come and join us here at Urban Hope. And not only join us here at Urban Hope, think about it, maybe you need to do it in your community.